Hello there, this is going to be my sine and cosine and probably inverse tangent video. I'm just going to kind of explain what each of these silly functions are and what the hell they mean. Um, okay, so let's see if I can do this. If you have, let's pick a nice bright blue. If you have crap, a graph of a circle, so we're going to make this xy plane and you have a graph of a circle look at that I'm pretty close now I'm completely not close there we go okay so a graph of a circle uh, whoa you can kind of say draw a line at any point right and you can say okay here, let me see if I can blow this up. You can say, okay, what is... Sorry for the distortion. I didn't, I don't feel like drawing it larger, so this should, this should work. So, say you draw this line, maybe we have that the angle is... I don't know, we'll say x degrees. Nah, x doesn't work. Theta degrees. Theta, that's theta right there. It's that circle with the line through it. That's kind of an ugly theta, but um, you get the picture. I'm sure you've seen it before. Uh, so if you just kind of like draw this line, wherever that line intersects the circle, right here, that point has some coordinates x and y, right? You can write in coordinates some x and some y. Well, basically, what this is, is this is cosine of theta and sine of theta, which you might have known that already, I'm sure you did, but if not, then I taught you something, good. Um, what, so what that is, is if you look at this point right here, it is cosine of theta in the in this direction right here, and it's y sine of theta high. So that's just where that point is. So this right here, and that right there, this is cosine of theta. And this is sine of theta. That's what they are. That's what that height is. So when you see sine of theta, think that's the height of that point on the circle. But, one thing. This is the unit circle that you always hear about. And that's because the radius of it is 1. And all that really means is that the distance at any point, from any point to the center is going to be 1. It's the, that's the distance. So, if, say I double that. So, um, say I take this whole circle, actually no, say I cut that in half for the sake of uh, space. Uh, crap. There we go. Yeah, I cut that in half. Well now, if you kind of look at it carefully, I don't know, this is probably not going to look pretty, but... If the radius of the circle gets cut in half, the height of this point also gets cut in half. And the length away that this point is also gets cut in half. So basically what you can kind of say is that if you have a circle with a radius of, say, r, right, that makes sense, hopefully, as a radius of r, that's a dreadful r, okay, so the circle has a radius of r, and then you've got, then the height of this point right here, if this angle is theta, the height of this point 
is sine theta right because that's just how high it is at that point and the distance away right here that it is is cosine of theta that's just the x coordinate so the coordinates of that point are cosine theta sine theta but wait we said that that's true if this radius is 1, right? So what if the radius is something different, like we said, r? Well, let's see, if we cut the radius in half, the height gets cut in half. If we multiply the radius by 2, the height doubles. So, as it turns out, it's a direct relationship. If you multiply the, ra the radius, or that 1, by 27, the height goes up by 27. So you can put radius cosine theta and radius sine theta, right? So if you have a circle with a radius of 27, then the height at this point is going to be that 27 times whatever the height would be if it was just a, a unit circle, if the radius was only 1. So it's the so basically, the height of a circle of a point up, black. The height of the point on the circle with a radius of 27 is just going to be whatever the height would be if it had a radius of 1 times 27. And the same thing with the cosine x direction. It would just be whatever it would be on the unit circle, however, uh, whatever the x value would be, the x coordinate times 27. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe that cleared something up. It probably didn't. It prob that sounded confusing even to myself, but let me know if anything actually did help. I appreciate hearing what works, what doesn't, any feedback, whatever. Always welcome. Okay, the next thing I'm going to try to help you make some sense of is this stupid thing that they always say. Um, tan inverse or that like tan to the power of negative of negative one uh, what, what is that really? well let's think about it for a second um, if you go uh, let's see I can do this I can do this oh yeah okay so we've got this right angle hopefully we have a right angle maybe we don't I don't know there we go so we've got a right angle there, and we know that maybe this angle right here is, say, should I use a number? Hmm. Uh, let me think. Okay, I'll use 45. Say that that's a 45 degree angle. We know that that's a 45 degree angle, so we know the angle of this. Well, if it's 45, you should know by now that 90 plus 45 is 135. The sum of the edge corners have to, sorry, corners have to add up to 180, so you end up 90, 45, 45 triangles, an isosceles triangle. So that means that these, right here, these block, these this side and this side, have the same length, right? Okay, so let's look at the slope. Actually, no. First, uh, what is tangent? Uh, maybe you've seen, maybe you haven't, Sakatoa. Um, damn it. Sakatoa, which means uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent, the tangent of this angle, is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So if these are the same, then a number divided by itself, that's just going to be 1. But also, what is that ratio kind of like? How much it goes up divided by how much it goes over? Well, that looks like the slope, doesn't it? And as it turns out, what tangent does is tangent takes an angle, say tangent of 60 degrees, 
and it gives you the slope of a line at 60 degrees. So then, say you have this slope. Say you have these triangle pieces. Well then, you can kind of take what's called the tangent, the inverse tangent, which is kind of like the opposite of taking the tangent, and it gives you the angle back. So, the, an example of this would be if you know that someone traveled, say, four meters in this direction, and you know that they traveled uh, three meters in this direction, how far, er, er how far did they travel and, and in what direction? Hopefully you understand the Pythagorean theorem, where if it's, um, a right angle triangle, 4 squared plus 3 squared, uh, that's 16 plus 9 equals 25 squared, that this side is 5. Hopefully you get how to use the Pythagorean theorem, but that I'm not going to teach in this video. Uh, hopefully you understand that. But the point is, um, 3 divided by 4, that's the tangent, right? Opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent, rise over run, rise over run. So, 3 over 4, that's the slope of this line. So when we take the inverse tangent of that, when we take the inverse tangent of that 3 over 4, that slope, we get an angle back, which turns out to be something like 37, I think. About 37 degrees. You'll see Dr. Christo use that number a lot, because it's nice ratios, and that's where he confuses some people. Um, because he just assumes that they know what ratios he's talking about. But uh, that's what inverse tangent is. Inverse tangent, you put in a slope, and you get out the angle of that line. So sine is the height of a circle at um, whatever point the, the angled line intersects the circle. Or sine is the height. Like, uh, cosine is the distance in the x-direction. I don't know any other way to say it. Um, and when you make the circle bigger, when you make the radius bigger, or the hypotenuse bigger, all the same thing, um, the height and the x-direction distance, whatever it's called, also get bigger. Uh, the length, maybe, the, the x-coordinate of the point on the circle. As the circle gets bigger, the x and the y-coordinates get bigger. So you just multiply whatever the radius of the circle is, you multiply the hypotenuse times that sine or cosine. And that's how you get uh, how large the actual um, height or like length kind of thing is. So if this is, um, say on a, uh, okay, say on a unit circle, this would be root 2 over 2. And that's if this length equals 1. But say you double that, well then, root 2 over 2 times 2, that's just root 2. Now they both become twice as high. If you make it um, 4 times as long, well now multiply each of these by 2 again, you get 2 root 2, 2 root 2. And you can multiply that by 3, 4, 5, whatever. Um, that's what it is. The big thing I want you to take out of this is that tangent takes an angle and gives you a slope. And more importantly, inverse tangent, which is confusing a lot of people, inverse tangent takes a slope and gives you back an angle. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Next video I'm going to start teaching vectors and a better way to look at it than the way that I think the, um, the physics and Poe teacher teaches. Uh, I'll see you then.